Hello, welcome and welcome to Oscar Modeling and welcome to my channel. My name is Peter and this is going to be part one of our new build series and it's as you can see here the 1200 scale Yamato by Trumpeter distributed by Monochrome and a couple others depending where in the world you are but the basic is the Trumpeter model. The only difference between the models where you are is, I think, is just the instruction manual. Um, one's in a ring binder, and the other ones uh, fold out like they usually are. So, um, as you can see, this is quite big, and I'll throw a couple of pictures up here on the side here. You'll see what happened yesterday. Um, I managed to move this, have this mounted up on the wall, which freed up the space on this cabinet here which has just happened to be the perfect size to fit the uh, massive uh, Yamato on. So, uh, yeah, um, so many people and so many requests for me to get a start on this. I thought, well, why not clear the bench, make some space and make a start. So this is part one and I would recommend if you like to know what's in this box and see my video of the unboxing of this and we and the review of everything throughout this, you can go back to the playlist and you'll see um, I have it all there and uh, you get an idea of what we're in for. Okay, so I have no idea how long this uh, will take to build. Um, no idea. Uh, I'm building it straight from the box. There's the only aftermarket I have for this is a deck, which we'll look at later, and uh, a few other bits of brass and, and uh, some barrels and things that came with it. Um, but that's it, otherwise, because as we know, this comes with about 15 sheets of photo etch, which I think is fine. And the idea behind this whole build series uh, on this is that anybody out there like me, with now only two years' experience building models, <laughs> um, anyone can build. Give this a give this a go and, and build it, and hopefully get a really good result and something they can be really happy and proud of. Um, which I'm certainly planning to have this sitting here displayed, uh, where I can look at it all the time, <laughs> right in front of my TV set. TV set. Okay, so let's get over the bench and um, make a plan on how we're going to make a start on this. Okay, um, and don't forget, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, hit that notifications bell so you get notified every time a new video gets um, uploaded and uh, scheduled and released. And your comments are welcome. Your comments throughout this series, as in all my other videos, are really welcome. It's great to see um, people's ideas, suggestions, and um, tips, and encouragement, and inspiration for me to keep going. <laughs> so please do that. Please, uh, comments are welcome below. All right, uh, let's get to that bench and make a start on uh, where we're going to start. Okay, back shortly. Okay, so as you can tell, it's quite a large ship <laughs> and a large model. It is actually 131 centimeters long, and that's 51 inches. So, yeah, quite big. Um, now, inside that box are other boxes where all the sprue is, the hull is, all the rest of it. And the first thing I need to do before I do anything is organize where all these sprues are that I need to search for to find what I need. Because if we look in here, it starts off with the parts and lists all the sprues. We've got all of them here, and there are dozens, all right? There's like eight of these, eight of these, five of these, four of these. Now, they're all in their boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all the boxes in there and write on the box the sprue letters that are in there so if there's two by k sprues two by j 
uh, eight by whatever. I'm going to write that all on the box so that I know exactly where to, which box to look in and where to find the parts that I need. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do right now, and then we'll come back and continue on. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Okay, welcome back again. So I, what I did was rather than write on each box what sprue letters are in there, I wrote them on a separate bit of paper because the boxes are labelled A, B, C and D and E. So what I've done is I've gone through box A and I've got there's eight sprues of Z, K, there's five sprues of Q, one of Z, E. So I know that if that's the, the sprue tree I'm looking for, I know which box to go to. And I was going to write on the bags they're on as well, but then I thought, oh, no. There's not that much to go through if you've got them divided up into their boxes. And going through box C goes through, which included all the aircraft clear parts. Box D, which was the major long decks. And uh, box E had some uh, smaller Z parts, which were all um, small individual pieces of superstructure. And now, as you can see, we're up to the photo etch. And the idea of the photo etch is that these are all lettered as well. So, for instance, we'll have photo etch sheet A, B, C, and C. There's going to be two of. There's going to be um, D will be four of them. All these are double, pretty much all one on each side of here. So there's 15 sheets altogether. What I'm going to do is I'll use a marker pen and I'll just, on the plastic on the outside, I'll just write which sprues are in there. That'll keep that simple to look at and don't have to pick them up and try to, try to see the small writing. <laughs> uh, and then they'll go in a container like that. So they'll all be in a safe spot and easily accessible. Okay, so for example, this one here is uh, sprue number 1D and 16. I don't know what the 16 is, uh, but it's D. There should be four of these. So there's one, two, and I'd say that might be the other one there. Is that it? Sprue D, yeah. So those two are the same, there's four of them. So I'll just write on the plastic here, D, on both sides, and pop them in the container. All right, so I will do that and be right back. Okay, so there's our photo etch all uh, labelled and put aside. There's quite a bit of weight in there. Um, they're over there. Now we also have some decals, which won't be used for a while, which also include the flags as well. So put them under the photo etch so they'll be safe. Now I also have the prop shafts here, the metal prop shafts. Again, I'll put those in the photo etch box. Um, now I did mention there was some aftermarket. The aftermarket part I bought was a wooden deck and with that wooden deck came some barrels. Um, so there's nine barrels for our turrets here. Now, I've already looked at these in my review of the and the box opening. And um, from what I can tell, the plastic, original plastic barrels look better than these. There's more detail on the plastic ones than on these. So I'm more inclined to go with the plastic ones, but we'll we'll see when we get to that. But those I'll keep them aside. Now along with those, there's lots and lots of other little gun barrels here. We've got, if I remember, 72 um, 25 millimeter guns. I think that is. Yeah, and then we've got 24 127 millimeter guns, and then there's five or is it five or three? I'm just trying to read that. 355 millimeter. So all these barrels, which will be great. There's also anchor chains in here as well. The kit does come with anchor chains. Um, 
that was uh, behind one of those sheets of photo etch. But it's a gold metal chain, whereas this here, which I bought through a company called 3D Wild, and the brand of the deck is, I think you pronounce it Chen Yu, C H U A N Y U, Chen Yu model ships. Um, I've used their decks before. They're quite good. They've got the adhesive backing on them, and they're they're really nice, nice decks. Now, um, so these anchor chains are already black, which will be which makes that handy. So we'll keep those. We'll definitely use those. And then we have all these barrels, as I was saying, in here. There's a heap. <coughs> all right. Now, I'm going to have to mark on these bags what is for what uh, and uh, and figure that out. <laughs> I'll have to go back to their website. So I'll write on these bags. I'll probably get a separate plastic container to put all these metal parts in just so they're going to be kept safe as well. Now, over here, you'll notice we've got Yamato rudders. Now, these are special 3D printed rudders that I got from Nigel, from Nigel's modeling bench. Um, so if you're interested in, in getting a, some of these rudders, um, there they are. But we'll get to them when we get to them. Got them in there nice and secure and safe. So all good. All right, um, I'll be back. I'll get these marked up and boxed up and then we'll continue on. I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I've bagged them all up and sorted them out. And uh, there's our different uh, size barrels for the guns there. And they're all labelled, including bollards there. There's eight large and 16 small to be used on the deck. There's our large turret guns. We'll put our... Uh, <laughs> bits for the... Uh, Rudder, <laughs> rudder, props, propellers. Um, yeah, I've got the name, the name slipped me. No. And our rudders in there and our anchor chains. And we'll put all that in there where it's safe. And that's the wrong size lid. Let me just fix that and back in a sec. There we go. Prop shaft. Or screw shaft. I think they're called screws on a ship. Yeah. Okay. Done. So that can go over in our box. All sorted out. All organized. Now, what have we got to do? Okay, so here is our deck. In here. Now, they actually had to replace it with the first one they originally sent out because it was uh, not fitting properly. So they did a recall and changed everyone's over. But they've also sent me some more bollards, another pack of bollards, a couple more anchor chains. So I'll put those in there. There's a brochure in here on uh, some of the other uh, products available. But um, in here is our deck which is like that. That part there is the deck masking. Masking, but this is our deck and this is the one that's going to be used. Um, so yeah, looking really nice. Um, I'll put that away under the boxes in the main box so it's safe. And, uh, and uh, put these as spares or extras, probably spares, bollards, I don't know if we'll have more than what we've got there, but we've got extra there now. So I'll put them in the container. Now, we're moving on to the, um, these ones here, especially with the painting and marking guide. I'll put that somewhere nice and safe, but that's another thing that gets a bit tattered after a while that away and uh, the rest of it all right back to our instruction book 
which I also want to uh, try to protect as best I can. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing is I've um, got my fingers crossed on a little tablet um, PC that I'm uh, about just recharging. I'm hoping it still works. I haven't used it for over a year. And if that works, what I'll do is I'll take photos of the page I'm working off and then I'll just stand it up over here and I can zoom in and out and whatever on the photograph. I won't have to touch this at all. So that, that's how I'm going to get around uh, keeping this in as pristine condition as I can. Um, yeah, so, all right, so let's make a start on this, shall we? Go through and uh, all our sprues are all in order. We know where to find everything, which is good. Now, we start with step one, and looks like step two, which are the ship's boats. Now, um, a lot of people might say, well, you know, why don't you leave them till the end because you're going to make them all up and then you just got to put them aside somewhere and, you know, put them at the end, on the, on the ship at the end. Um, the same with the aircraft in step three. Um, but... I've got no problem doing that. I don't mind uh, putting them aside, and it's a good thing to just sort of warm up. Um, the only thing with these I've noticed, looking at this, is um, there's no colour call-outs on any of this. So you've got to just do your own research and find out um, your colours. Um, there is photo etch going on these, which is good. It's a nice touch. Um, there's actually, I think there were... 12 we've got one it's it's quite awkward the instructions here because they don't step one is actually showing this to here is one and then this to here is two boats then over here we've got one boat so that's three then we've got this one but they want six of them made so that brings it up to nine boats and then we've got this one here which they want four made so that's nine 13 boats. So we've got 13 to build. Now, also, the instructions, right, I've been right to the end, do not tell you where these boats go. Um, in fact, there isn't anywhere to fit 13 boats, as far as I can tell. <laughs> um, but I'm going to build them anyway. Because um, I'm just... Um, yeah, I just want it. <laughs> so I'm going to build them anyway. So to start with, uh, I need to get some sprues out, don't I? So most of these boats are K sprue and D sprue. That looks like the ones I need. And of course, there'll be photo etch to add to them as well. So I will go now, grab the sprues, and uh, I shall be right back. Okay, so here's our sprues. We've got two K sprues, one D sprue. There's all our boats. Um, they look quite detailed too. Even the holes look really nice. They've got nice looking um, detail there. So it looks like, and it's good that they're all the parts are on these sprues. There's the large captain's one, I think. But when I mentioned earlier about there's no paint information or anything to, to know how to do this i've got to advise the best reference you can have for this model is the anatomy of a ship and i'll show you why look at that so so here we are we've got the ship's boats here we can see all the detail of them we can get an idea of the color so obviously we've got wood decks in there. We've got gold colored smokestacks on this as well. And this looks like the, um, the motor ceremonial barge. Okay. I would say that looks like the one on this sprue. But we'll check when we're looking at the instructions of the detail on that. 
uh, actually it's not it's the one on, it's one on the K sprue so it's going to be one of these and I'd say that's it there so this is a great reference look at this so you've got all the different angles you can see um, there's probably extras on here there's railings on here which maybe that's what yes we have railings on the photo which all right so that's that that's that particular boat um, then we go over and we've got these ones this is the 150 horsepower motorboat So again, great reference photos. We can see what we need to color, where we need, what we need to paint. This would probably just be the stand deck tan. Would look fine on those. Really nice, even around the window surrounds. If you want to go right into doing some detail work, that's the way to go. Um, over here we've got the 60 horsepower 11 meter motorboats. So there they are. They look interesting with the white tops over there, over where the people sit inside. Uh, again, nice scaled drawings here. These are at 1 100 scale, so you go and see exactly. And we've got more boats. Look at this. These are the 12 meter 30 horsepower motor launchers. So this is showing both with and the cover on with the cover off. I'm not sure if this comes with the option of doing that. Uh, it might do. Well, we'll see. But again, look at that. So you can see they've got the little padding around the sides, which I don't know if they're included. I think they are. Yes, I do see them just off to the off to the side there on the instructions. So they are there. So you know to paint them white. So you know these get these coming up looking really well, I, I believe. And here we got more uh, nine meter cutters. Um, they're quite nice, open, got all the oars lying down there inside. Uh, and here we've got a sampan, uh, smallest one, eight pan, uh, eight meter, 26 foot. But is that it? No, we're still going. There's a 20 foot, six meter sampan. There you go. Looking really nice there too. Uh, and I think that's about it for the boats, yeah. So there you go. Lots of great detail there to reference and go look at. And it's all in this. Definitely a good investment. And nice to have there with your ship sitting there outside the case uh, as part of your display. All right. I'll put this away and um, we'll look at uh, getting some pieces off the sprue and, um, and building up a couple of these, putting some together. All right, go grab a cup of coffee and I'll do the same and we'll be right back. All right, so this is the uh, 17 meter ceremonial barge. And looking at the instructions, I didn't realize earlier, it's actually going to make two of these, which explains why there were two on the sprue. <laughs> so um, just one thing to note, um, the connection points on the sprue are really not in a good spot. They're right on the top of the boat just here. And I'm going to have to get a proper pointing device to use. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll try this. So they're just there. There's four four points along there and there. Now I cut them off close and then uh, sand them. But you've got to get in there, put in a nice fresh blade, and you can get in there and just go down each side and, and, and get them out. Because when the deck goes on, it doesn't cover them. The deck actually sits inside, and it is a really nice fit too. Like, when you push that down, which I won't because I had to force it out, it's a really nice fit in there. So there we go. So what I'll do is um, I'll continue on and uh, just need to attach that onto there. 
Now, like I said, the colors that we need to paint this, the deck, the, I checked through the um, the kit. The aftermarket deck that I got doesn't include de decks for the boats. Um, so that's fine. That means we just have to do this with a uh, deck tan and, uh, you know, maybe with a bit of uh, a panel line wash, we can get some detail up on it. But uh, there's actually no plank detail on the deck at all. So we'll see what we can do. Um, yeah. So I'm going to get some more parts off and uh, and we'll build this thing up and get it together. I think the next point on this build is putting the rudder on. And I'm just looking at... It does seem that the rudder and the propeller um, that go on here, it's all um, same colour grey as the boat will be, except the propeller itself, which will be the gold. Yeah, we've got that as a gold colour, so we'll do that just to give it that um, metallic effect. All right, so I shall continue. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, a little bit more progress here. So I've taken these off. These are the roofs, I guess you'd call them, that go on top of the deck here. Now, um, they fit really nice on there. Just make sure when you cut the the sprue nubs off there that you make sure that's very smooth. Now, in my videos, you may see me using this. This is a nano glass um, sanding stick. This one's made by Razor, and uh, fantastic. They use these for the Gundam models, but really, really good for this as well. Um, basically just run this across there it does such a, a fine job and you won't see or feel any sign of where you've tried where you've taken off the plastic and all you do is when the dust builds up just give it a wipe like that and it's ready to go again um, I'll use this a lot through this build um, so what I'm going to also mention here is there are portholes in here and there's some round ones. So what I'm going to do is I'll drill them out. Uh, they look like they might be a 0.2 mil drill bit. Um, we'll, we'll have a look at that in a sec. Uh, that goes to the front there. Now the one on the back, that one, <laughs> is actually got square windows, which I couldn't find, for the life of me find a square drill bit. So I won't be able to drill those out. Um, but instead what I will do is I will black them out with black paint in there or maybe I'll just fill it with some panel line wash and then over the top of that I'll be using my, um, here it is here, my ultra glue, MIG ultra glue which is what I'll use for the portholes and this stuff is great for making uh, windows, glass windows. It dries beautifully glass, crystal glass clear. Um, I've been using that in a lot of my videos. If you've been watching, you'll know this is my go-to for, for windows and portholes. Um, so that's what I'll be doing after it's all been painted, of course, is just with a pin or, you know, I've got like an old airbrush needle just with a dab of that on it, just touch it into there and it's done, you know, beautiful. Or if you wanted to, you can go from the inside because that'll be painted. So that will go on there and then those ones will also be, um, if I grey them out or make them just a slightly darker tint in there, um, then I'll touch them also with this to give that glass effect which is what we want because if we look at our images from the anatomy of the ship here, you can see there, stop the glare, that's what we're trying to replicate. It shouldn't be a problem. See, they look really nice. There's the other one there. There they are there. You can see the glass. We'll put glass on that, give it a nice little reflection. Now you also notice there's a life buoy on top of this and there is one on our little boat here so there's one on the top there 
So that one will have to be painted in the red and white, very, very delicately with a tiny little brush, but we'll get in and be able to do that as well. Uh, the photo etch for this is just a piece that will go on the front here, just on the edge here. There's two little railings that go on there and they will look fine. Um, another thing I noticed that is not included on the instructions, but it is here, is that this actually has a mast. So if you can see there, there's a mast here with, with um, some rigging. Also, there's one on the back as well with some rigging going across. You know, I don't know how I might be able to make something up for that. Not sure. Um, there's also one on the front here that we don't have any photo etch or any plastic for, like a, a flagpole of some sort. So we'll we'll see what can be made up. I might be able to make something up and uh, and get that set. Also, also there's some railing around the roof of this which is shown on the plastic, but there is no photo etch for that. Now there is a detail up set that you can buy for this kit. It's um, distributed through Pontos and um, I'm pretty sure it probably includes all of that. But um, it was a bit out of my price bracket to be paying uh, as much as I paid for the ship again for the photo etch when this comes with 15 sheets of photo etch as it is, so I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> okay, so I will uh, continue on and um, get some holes drilled. We'll get some holes drilled, okay, back shortly. Oh, and also there's a couple of funnels uh, that need to go on here as well, which we've got, so we'll, we'll be able to attach those. Okay, back shortly. And I'll just show you the drill bits I'm using here. So these are made by Icky Sticky. And um, these are tungsten micro drill bit sets. And uh, quite a good choice here. I'm going to go with the, I think that's a 1.1 millimeter. Looks to be about the size I want. Yeah. So I'm going to put that in here. Just tighten that up. And we're going to drill these out. It's only take a second. These things are really nice and sharp. There you go. There's one. So also, I didn't mention before, we've got these little, um, like, uh, vents in the roof here. I'm also going to drill those out and be putting the... Uh, just a touch of crystal clear in there too. All right. Yeah, and they're a little bit smaller. They look like they're probably, you know, these these go down to, gosh, we've got, you know, 0 0.1 millimetre, so no problem. It's probably around about 0 0.4 or 5 for those holes on the top there. Okay, so I'll get these drilled out and... Uh, yeah. yeah, that's about the size they are. That's perfect. So they're just for the record, uh, 1.1 mil. Okay, we'll be back shortly. Okay, we're back and uh, got those holes all drilled. You can see them there. Nice and neat. A little 616 on the top there. They're done. I've also done those little, those, I think it's a smokestack of some sort. There's one there. And there's the other ones in there as well. And there's another couple to do, but they're really, really tiny. I might just, I haven't decided if I'll paint them on the sprue or how I'm going to do them. But now we're on to a bit of photo etch. We're going to do the two little bits of railing on the bow. Um, there's also what looks like some sort of a, uh, a, a, flagpole or something um, and then there's uh, the area where the steering wheel will go which it doesn't have but it has represents that area so if you look on here we've got these two bits of rail one on each side this 
piece here and this part the photo etch we need to bend and put on the there so yeah I'll go ahead and do that we've got our photo etch we've got our master tools photo etch bending which is what we definitely need uh, the tile is to cut our photo etch on very handy need something solid so it's not going to bend it and a sharp blade for bending for, for cutting the photo etch i've got one here which i specifically labeled photo etch it's a nice uh fresh blade in there all right so um yeah i'm gonna cut these now what i'll do is because these will all be painted um gray uh, then I will be able to attach these now um, so they can get painted while this when this part does so we'll be able to attach them on there okay um, another good little trick I have is I use a bit of blue tack so if you get a piece of little blue tack for photo etch um, and you stick that there when you cut your piece off, you can place it on that blue tag and it'll hold it there. Um, and then you know it's not going to fling off and disappear anywhere. Or in this case where I've got a few pieces to do, I might use a little plastic cap to put them in. Um, but this is also handy for if you want to um, um, have them in a position so that when you pick them up to place them where you want them to go, they're in that position already. You're not fumbling around and then the photo edge just holds them really nicely okay so uh i'm going to get some of this photo edge off and um we'll have a look at uh putting a bit on okay i'll be back in a sec okay so i've just taken the railings off for both the pieces here we've got four little railings there i've cut them straight off the sprue then picked them up with the tweezers and placed them straight onto the blue tack there in the exact position where pretty much they're going to be you come back to them after pick them up and put them where they go on the part so it's a great way of, of handling this without uh, losing it and without touching it too much and the chance of bending it or or having problems but um, yeah so there you go now, how that makes things a little bit easier all right so now I'm going to glue these on what I do to glue these on is I'm using some icky sticky medium CA glue and uh, at these you can buy these uh, applicators I've got one on here okay and I've got a okay, there's the one I'm using there so I'll let you place a small amount but even then it's going to be too much for there so what I'll do is I'll get a piece of paper and I'm sort of looking at other options at the moment of what I can use but this is the way I have been doing it so I get a bit of paper like these little post-it notes right and then I'll put a drop of glue there and then I have two little pieces of wire on the end of these pens now these have been glued in I've had these for gosh as long as I've been modeling nearly two years <laughs> Um, this bit of wire is a bit, bit thicker than this copper piece but um, so what I'll do is I'll just touch that in the glue touch that where I want it to go but in this case because these are so small I'll touch the bot the base of the railing where it's going to connect onto the part I'll just touch that in the glue so it'll be you can see but I'll basically pick it up like that touch it in there and then come across and position it where it's going done but this when i want to place glue on a part that i'm putting the photo etch on these little wires can be two size options for a smaller amount and then gradually because the glue does tend to build up on the end is you come along with a lighter like, like this one's got a bit of glue on the end and i just simply go like that and then burn it off and that's fresh to go again and like i said i've been using this for ages they last forever all right so i'm going to do this i'll place these two pieces off on the 
on the part here and then uh, we'll go over and get the other two pieces of photo etch off here and get them ready to put on as well okay i'll be back in a sec hey welcome back again guys so i almost made a mistake um, i was showing you how i was going to put these uh, on top of the roof of this but when i look more closely at the instructions now that i've got it on my little screen here um, they actually go on the deck and you can see the two of them here and they actually go onto the deck which is on the front of here so that changes a few things because i need to paint this deck before i can put them on um, this needs to be all deck tan now in really up close if you look at this um, there's a lot of detail in there that needs to be hand painted very very carefully um, after i've done the uh, actual deck tan on here uh, let me show you in the book the photograph which is also why i'm going to do another thing as well i'll just grab the book here so as you'll see here the best is looking at this one here uh get the glare away so yeah so that's where they go on the deck on the sides of the deck there's also these little gray bits on the deck and then we've got these which are gold they'll, they'll go on and what i'm thinking is the railings i'm going to leave them as they are i'm not going to paint them i'm just going to leave them the gold photo etch that they are because that will match in with uh, the other gold parts that are on there um, there's also the white around on here and i'm thinking of doing a waterline black on the bottom of the hull just to add a bit more um, detail to it so yeah so what i'm going to have to do now is um, move put these aside for a bit and get these painted uh, yeah before i put them on so you know lucky i checked all right i'll be back soon okay welcome back again so everything is all ready to be undercoated i'll be using a uh, gray uh, primer by outlaw paints and uh, what i've done here and another little tip that i've picked up over my time doing this um, toothpicks you can buy them quite cheap in bulk like this and what i do is i cut them the ends off so they're not too tight and i glue them to a part that won't be seen so what i do is i'll touch them in some ca glue put them on there and then i'll use my ca activator touch that there and bang they're on there solid and they remove quite easily um, you just bend that and it'll just snap straight off and they're on a part you can't see anyway but it's more secure than i used to use blue tack and i will still use blue tack sometimes but they tend to move and sometimes they might even fall off and you don't want the things falling off when you when you're in the middle of airbrushing them these are solid they're not going to fall off anywhere now also i made a little mistake uh, putting the photo etch on so this part here that i thought was a um, flagpole originally um, there's two the tab that sticks out the top of it and this is uh i'll get that part number in a sec it's off this oh, i can't I'll, I'll get the number for you um they actually fold i thought they were representing the flag because um, if you look at the picture from the anatomy of a ship there is a flag there but they're not when they fold in half they are actually two little lights up on the top there um, the instructions in the manual are really hard to see that they don't show you the fold and the pitch is just not clear so i mean if i bring this up on here we'll have a quick look uh yeah so if i can do this without too much glare where is it 
It's our photo etch piece. There it is there. I don't know if you can see that, but it doesn't really show, but there is a bend. You do have to bend it and it points towards the bow. And it doesn't go where I stuck it too. So I actually didn't look at where that arrow is pointing down as closely as I should have. And I, I, moved, I put it up onto the top of the roof. But that's actually where one of the vents go. So um, back uh, the next one a photo here will show the vents going on. See that? There they are. Where is it? Sorry. This. There we go. So those two little vents, that little one goes on the roof. This actually goes, there's a tiny little spot on this slope in the front there. That's where it goes. So I actually had to, I pulled the thing off. It was okay. I used a bit of um, CA debonder. Again, nice, good, icky, sticky product to remove the glue. And I only took a second and then put it in the right place. Um, as for those small pieces, because they are so tiny, they're actually mounted on the end of the toothpick like that, uh, ready to paint. The toothpick goes into the hole. They're, they're actually hollowed out at, in the end there. So that when I pull this out, I can just dab some black paint in there to, and, and that'll be fine. There'll be no markings. Um, same with the funnel, I guess you'd call it, goes on top two pictures straight up inside that and they're ready to paint now I've just thought about it just now and I've forgotten about the rudder or the propeller that goes underneath and I think there's a shaft as well yeah so going back to our instructions here there's our little propeller there and a little shaft that needs to go on the bottom and I will put that on now the propeller itself is going to be gold colored but i can paint over that so that'll be fine i'll be doing all of that under their black yeah i'll be doing all that under their black most likely i haven't decided if i've that for sure but yeah i will get those off the sprue and um i'll connect the the shaft part on um but the actual um propeller itself or screw i don't know what you call it uh that is going to be really really tiny so yeah it'd probably be best to put it on there and paint it all uh on this as one piece in the undercoat and then uh come back and touch it up with a break with a brush to get the gold look or bronze look let's see how we go Okay, so I'm going to go over now and give these a spray uh, undercoat and uh, yeah, and we'll come back and continue back shortly, guys. Hey, everybody, welcome back. So all our parts here are pre-sprayed um, with uh, the undercoat, it's the Outlaw Paints Primer, and it's gone on really nice. And what I'm doing now is I've just put that aside and I've taken out the decks and what I want to do is spray these with the deck tan. Now I've got my XF78 wooden deck tan here. Um, and then I noticed that there's some little um, holes in the floor that I don't want to spray deck tan. So I don't know if you can see it in there. Yeah, check, see that. What I've done is I've used some liquid mask and I've just dropped it in there. So I've got this one here. This is a... Uh, Vallejo liquid mask and uh, just using again toothpicks and just filled those holes with that I'm just going to let that dry for about half an hour and then uh, put our deck tan over the top now there are other areas that I can't use liquid mask because they're raised um, spots but we'll do our best um, with a tiny brush to to get those when I come to needing to do the grey and the grey which will be on the boats so see that's all come up nice in the undercoat i'll uh, hand brush the little um propeller underneath and uh 
that should be fine so that that's they're ready they're ready to spray in fact all of these are ready to spray in the gray um including the little vents that will go on top of here and the smokestack or that uh, the smokestack itself is actually not going to be gray so i'll have to remember that it's actually a gold color which what i'm going to do is i'm going to use copper for the propeller and maybe it looks like a very similar copper on the um, just picture from the anatomy of a ship i'll just bring that across and show you so you can see there get the glare off it so you see the stacks they're also silver including the two smaller ones not silver they're a, a, a goldy chrome or coppery color so i might go with the copper just because it's, it's the same color as what the propeller is um, you can see those little holes in the deck which are here which i'm going to make sure they don't get covered with the deck tan and uh and that should be all good uh, the railing will go on afterwards once everything else is on because i'm going to leave that the gold so it matches in with everything else now i know there's a, a mast on the front I haven't figured out what I'm going to use there. I found some small diameter sprue, but I still think it's too thick. So I'm not sure about that. And the mast itself in there, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. It's got all rigging and everything on it. Uh, I may not go as far as that. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, I'm going to wait for this to dry. I may as well go put some paint on these. And uh, we'll come back and have a look at the result. Okay, we we'll be back in a minute. Hey, welcome back. So I've just uh, got these pieces here. That are, these are the ones with the um, port holes drilled out. And what I want to do is put some of the uh, MIG ammo, uh, this one, ultra glue, into the holes there. So it dries clear and it look like it look like there's glass in there. Now I've got one in there and what I did was this one was a bit thin. I must have mixed that for something else. So I made one here a little bit thinner. I've just got some fresh out of the bottle and put a little bit of water on there. Basically, you get a toothpick and just touch on the end of the toothpick and then go up to your window and done. Just touch it in there. I hope you can see that how tiny that is. But yeah, and, and, and it's just a matter of going around to each window, touching it like that. like that and that's that side done we'll turn it around one two three one more four done now what I'll do also is I'll do the tops in there as well uh, but this is how i'm going to do all the portholes on the ship um, ones that are a little bit bigger you just want to make that a little bit thicker but not by much and again you just I'm, i haven't cut anything off the toothpick i'm using the very tip because of the smallness but you can make your toothpick uh, wider if you need to fill a bigger hole um, but they're fine for portholes of this scale no problem at all so yeah uh, that's that one done. Um, might as well do that while we're here. Just grab some. Do the top here. Just a matter of, again, touching it in there like that. There it is. One, two, three. Oh. Oh, you get, it's as easy as it looks trust me six making sure the holes are filling properly they are good and they'll be clear within an hour there's not much in that and then uh, and that's done because that's already the final coat so that can be set aside all right, so when I come back now, um, I've got all the other parts drying out there. And uh, when I get them back, 
I'll be able to put them together and we'll build up one of these boats and we'll take a look at it. All right, I'll be back when that's done. See you in a second. Okay, back again. I just want to show you another bit more progress. So on the hulls here, we've got these white, which are the like bumpers on the port and starboard, or the bow and starboard side. I'm getting that wrong, aren't I? On the stern. <laughs> so, yeah. So what I'm doing to get that effect, if you can see that, it's very small. I'll show you the photo that I'm that I'm copying from, and you can see them there. Get the glare off. So you can see that on there. Uh, to get that effect, I'm using these um, Posca pens. Really good handy pens. You can buy them online anywhere. And they're just paint pens. And I'm painting them on uh, a lot easier than using a brush. And uh, they come up really well. So Posca pens, yeah, check them out. Very handy for little bits like that. Um, I was going to try Mr. Color White, but... Uh, and then I realized I had my pen and I gave it a go and it's come up well. So that's one done. I'm just going to do the other one now. And just paint them on and uh, those will be done. Okay. All right. Once again, I'll be back. Okay. Welcome back. So here's the completed uh, two, first two boats of step one. And going by the anatomy of the ship, these are the ceremonial barges, the 17 meter ones. And there we go. So there's how they're looking. Quite nice. Um, I'll put a couple of photos up in the corner here so you can see a bit closer. Um, but yeah, they look really good. I'm leaving, at this point, I'm going to leave the railings as they are with the photo etch like it is, although I may paint them copper just to match the smokestack and the other little bit of, bits of copper on there. Um, the white came out well on the end here. What I ended up doing was using the Posco pen and did that white. So they came up really nice. Um, we've got our brass looking propeller underneath. Uh, all our windows are shining. And glistening with the the glue in there acting as glass and uh, yeah I'm really happy with them they've come out really well now there is a note in the anatomy of the ship here that mentions these lights up top here and it actually says um, that the upper light is white and the lower light um, it's half green glass on the starboard side. So one side would be green glass. And on the port side is red glass. So if I can put a touch of green and a touch of red on either side, then that would represent the the glass of those. I will probably do that. I know it's a very small, small detail, but hey, it's all in the detail, isn't it? So that will be done. Um, there's the little life boy ring on the roof here. I do need to paint that red and white. Um, let's have a look at it on the actual picture here. So you can see it there on the roof. It's going to be very, very tricky to paint because of its proximity to the actual roof. Um, but I will probably give it my best shot i'm not too sure i might be able to paint it we'll see how it goes be very very careful but anyway they're done um i'll touch those up those little bits up and put these away in a box where they'll be secure and we can add boats as we go okay so that is the end of part one of our one two hundred scale yamato build um for those of you who are watching Thank you very much, and I hope you stick it out through the whole series. Like I said in the beginning, no idea how long this will go, but I'll go as I did in this video, um, give my little tips as I go, and and uh, 
things that if anyone else is doing this build, someone might be able to learn something from. Um, so yeah, and if uh, you're first coming to this channel and just seeing this video for the first time, hit that subscribe button, hit the notifications bell so you get notified every time a video is uploaded. And give us a thumbs up for the algorithms so that more people can get out there and watch this. I'm expecting this series to be very, very popular. And uh, if you haven't already, go back to the playlist. You can go see my unboxing and review of this kit when it first came out. Um, as far as I know, I was one of the first YouTube channels to have this uh, review up on up available. And uh, if you want to know what's in the box and and all through the instructions and what's involved, recommend going and having a look at that. Okay, and please comment. Comments are welcome below. Put your comments down there, your tips and suggestions. And uh, I, I read all the comments and take it all on board. And um, it's great to, to see all the ideas people have as well throughout this build. Um, just so you know, this will come out as a weekly video at this stage. So when this comes out, is actually released you'll know that i'm working on the next part so it's not like there's we're four or five videos ahead before you see them um, your tips and suggestions and comments really come to me and i will see them and most likely implement them in the next in the next video okay all right so thanks all for watching and uh i'll see you all in part two okay bye for now cheers